So, we have or we got average number of particles in F d and in B or sum over k lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k by 1 plus minus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. And average number of particles if we consider for F d or for F d statistics. average number of particles is lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k by 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. And this average number of particles is nothing but sum over k n k bar, where n k bar is the average number of particles in the kth quantum state. So, we can write n k average for F d is sum over k lambda e to the minus b sum over will not be there because we are talking about now n k small n k. So, lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k by 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. Okay. So, and for B statistics we will have minus sign here in the denominator. So, this is the average number of particles n k bar means the average number of particles in the kth quantum state can be written as lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k by 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. Okay. So, what is the average energy? Okay. So, average energy can be written as epsilon k times n k over n k bar and we can write sum over k lambda epsilon k e to the minus beta epsilon k by 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. This is the average number, average energy and then we can also calculate P average times volume or P V and we know the expression for P V is K B T ln theta. Now, we substitute value of theta we get plus minus. So, P V for B F D and B plus minus K B T sum over K ln 1 plus minus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. Her plus sign like before plus sign is for FD statistics and minus sign is for B statistics. So, we have calculated average number of particles for a both B, F D and B statistics in a given in a in, a, in kth quantum state as well as we calculated average energy uh, which is represented by uh, sum over k epsilon k times n k average and if we substitute the value of n k uh, in this expression we get uh, lambda epsilon 
k e to the minus beta k by 1 uh, and then if we consider both if d and b in the same expression we can write in the denominator 1 plus minus lambda e to the minus beta e k epsilon k. Similarly, we can calculate uh, p times v average pressure times volume for both f d and b statistics and we get we can calculate uh, average pressure time volume pressure times volume by the expression by using the expression k b t ln theta. Now, if we substitute the value of theta here, okay, so if we substitute the value of theta for f d and b statistics, we get uh, relation like p times p average times volume is plus minus k b t sum over k ln 1 plus minus lambda epsilon to the e, lambda e to the a minus beta epsilon k where plus sign is for fd statistics and minus sign uh, is for b statistics. Now, few things uh, you should remember here. So, things to remember. Number one point is point number one is the molecular partition function. So, the molecular partition function Q that we uh, used frequently in case of classical statistics uh, is not a relevant. Quantity when we are dealing with quantum statistics. That is if d and b statistics. Second point to remember is there is no intermolecular forces in the calculation that is intermolecular forces are neglected. And third point to remember is the individual particles. This th point number three is very important. The the individual individual the individual particles are not. independent because because of the symmetry requirements of the wave function. Point number three is the individual particles are not independent because of the symmetry requirements of the wave functions. Now, if you remember, we briefly mentioned that both B and F D statistics will move over to classical statistics or Boltzmann statistics in the limit of high temperature and low density. So, we will now discuss that. Both 
if D and B E statistics go over into Bulgeman or classical statistics in the limit of high temperature or low density where the number of available molecular quantum states is much greater than the average number of particles in any state. is very small since most of the states most states will be unoccupied and those states that are occupied will most likely have or contain only one particle. So, as I mentioned both F D and B statistics go over into Boltzmann uh, or classical statistics in the limit of high temperature or uh, low density where the number of available molecular quantum states is much greater than the average number of particles in a uh, in any state uh, is very small. Okay. Since most states will be unoccupied and those states that are occupied will most likely contain only one particle. So, this means in k average goes to 0 in equation suppose this is our uh, equation 1. So, in k average goes to 0 in equation 1 this is achieved by letting lambda to 0 thermodynamically this means this 
this means the limit of n by v or density goes to 0 for fixed temperature or p goes to infinity for fixed n by v. Thus, for small lambda value, equation 1 becomes in k average is lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. Again, we know sum over k in k average gives n average and we can write n average as n suppose is lambda sum over k e to the minus beta epsilon k. So, lambda is nothing but n by sum over k e to the minus beta epsilon k. So, if you substitute the value of lambda in the expression of n k average, we get n k average by n, this is nothing but a probability of finding the kth quantum state is e to the minus beta epsilon k by sum over k e to the minus beta epsilon k. So, this p k is the probability of the kth state. So, this is nothing but Boltzmann distribution. So, we have seen that both FD and B statistics go over to Boltzmann's distribution or Boltzmann statistics in the limit of low temperature in the limit of high temperature and low density. Okay. So, next we consider ideal Fermi gas. So, from FD statistics, we get in k average is lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k by 1 plus lambda e to the minus beta epsilon k. Or we can also write this as 1 by e to the beta epsilon minus mu plus 1 and this is f plus this is f plus is nothing but Fermi function. So, this Fermi function if you if you check if you see the expression for n k average and f plus uh, you, you can immediately figure out that both are equivalent. Okay. So, Fermi function is nothing but n k average. So, this is the Fermi function. Now, we consider uh, uh, two cases. Okay. So, for case 1 we consider t goes to 0 or 
beta goes to infinity. Okay, so, for this case, the Fermi function f plus, which is function of epsilon equals to 1, if epsilon is less than epsilon f, we will discuss shortly what is epsilon f and equals to 0 if epsilon is greater than epsilon f. So, in the first case we consider absolute temperature goes to 0, in that case f plus goes to 1 if epsilon is less than epsilon f and it goes to or it becomes 0 if epsilon is greater than epsilon f, where epsilon f is known as Fermi energy. So, if you look at the expression for f plus above and this condition here, you can immediately uh, notice that this Fermi energy is nothing but chemical potential. Okay. So, what is the definition of Fermi energy? So, epsilon f Fermi energy is nothing but limit t goes to 0 mu t. So, this is the definition of Fermi energy means when in the limit of temperature, when the limit of uh, very, very uh, small temperature, there is nothing but the chemical potential. So, this is uh, uh, the expression for Fermi energy. So, if we plot epsilon versus f plus versus epsilon for this case, okay. so when t goes to 0 or beta goes to infinity, if we, pl if we plot f plus versus epsilon, what we what we get we we realize that f plus or we, we it is it is quite obvious that f plus is a step function so so from this plot from this plot we can draw the conclusion like, so from the above plot we can deduce all states up to f cell and f are filled for sure with probability 1, right. So, all the states which are having energy less than the Fermi energy value are filled up with one particle. All states above epsilon f are empty. Third point, this is this third point is a very, very interesting one. This is very different from a classical gas where at zero temperature all gas molecules would have 
zero energy. So, this observation is very different from a classical gas. In case of classical gas at zero temperature, all molecules, all gas molecules would have zero energy, but here when T goes to zero, you have different quantum states and the quantum states up to epsilon f value will be filled with one particle. Fourth point is, this is very important, why we observed this kind of a phenomena. It is a direct result of result of the exclusion principle which leads to an effective repulsion between fermions. So, this observation is, is, is a direct result of the exclusion principle which leads to an effective repulsion between fermions. So, fermions. So, if a particular state below epsilon f is already occupied, so it will not let another particle to come and occupy in that state. So, there is a there is a basically an kind of effective repulsion between the particles or between the fermions. Now, we will calculate <coughs> or we will quantify Fermi energy. We have talked about Fermi energy, but how one can calculate Fermi energy? What is the so we will derive that expression now? The sum over quantum states. So, what we did first, we, we take a sum of Fermi function, and then if we sum this one, we get total number of particles and this can be written as 0 to epsilon, 0 to infinity d epsilon g epsilon and f plus epsilon, where g epsilon is the density of states and g epsilon times d epsilon is number of states, number of states in energy range epsilon and epsilon plus d epsilon. We can derive one expression like we are writing now. So, for a spinless particles, 
for spinless particles in a box. So, G epsilon is nothing but d v epsilon to the half, where d is twice m by h crossed to the 2 whole to the 3 by 2 1 by 4 pi square, where m is the mass of fermion. When you incorporate the idea of spin, each transitional standing wave so each transitional state corresponds to two s plus one states since the particle has since the particle has two s plus one number of possible spin states. Thus, we can write g epsilon is d tilde v epsilon to the half, where d tilde is nothing but 2 s plus 1 times d her s is the spin of the particles for for electron s is half huh? so we can write thus average number of particles n is 0 to epsilon f d tilde v epsilon to the half d alpha d uh, epsilon so we get if we do the integration we get d tilde v epsilon f to the 3 by 2. Uh, from there we get epsilon f is 3 n by 2 d tilde v, v is the volume or you can write epsilon f is h cross to the 2 a to the 2 by 2 m. 6 pi square n 2 s plus 1 times v to the 2 y So, this is the expression for Fermi energy. So, Fermi energy depends on uh, two quantities one is mass of the fermion as well as n by v or density of the system. Okay. So, we can write again E like we did for number of particles, we can calculate energy and we get the energy, energy is 3 by 2. 5 times n times epsilon uh, f Fermi energy. So, what are the conclusions from the above discussions? So, the conclusions are like epsilon f or Fermi energy decreases 
with m means mass of the fermion. This is point, point number 1. So, point number 1 is epsilon f decreases with m or mass of the fermion. Second point epsilon f increases with density n y v. Number point number 3 is epsilon f defines a characteristic temperature. Epsilon f is k v times T f and at 0 temperature there is there is a finite energy per particle epsilon is 3 by 5 times epsilon f. This is because E is nothing but E by n, this is nothing but average Fermi energy, the average energy. Okay. So, this is nothing but, so this is nothing but or we can write here. Okay. So, E by n is nothing but so we discussed ideal Bose case when absolute temperature goes to zero. Next, we consider low temperature limit, low temperature larger, low temperature but finite uh, temperature value limit. Okay, low but finary, finite uh, temperature value. So case two is. when T is low but finite. So, T does not go to 0, but T is very low. Okay. So, we know a plus Fermi function. So, we know Fermi function a plus already derived it. one by e to the beta epsilon minus mu plus 1. When T is low but finite, we write a plus epsilon is goes to 1 if e to the beta minus mu very very less than plus 1. It goes to 0 if e to the beta e to the beta times epsilon minus mu is much much larger than 1 and it is it becomes half if epsilon is mu. Okay, so, if we if we plot a plus versus uh, epsilon, so if we plot a plus versus epsilon, the plot looks like
So, this red line represents when t goes to 0, the case we already discussed before and and the black line represents when t is low but finite. So, this is value of epsilon uh, f plus is 1 there and if we consider or if we concentrate this region in particular. Okay. So, this region temperature in this region of temp this region is nothing but the region of kbt now what we uh, what conclusion we can draw from this uh, curve and this point needless to say this point is nothing but up so what we conclude from here is in this region, the region yellow shaded one, consider this region as well as this region and if we consider the low temperature of when t goes to 0 that temperature limit, so this one is nothing but epsilon f. Now, you concentrate on the region of yellow shaded region. So, you observe that in this region, the value of epsilon is lower than epsilon f, but the states are unoccupied. Now, if we consider the this yellow colored region below here, okay, so what you find here is in this region epsilon is higher than epsilon f, but the states are filled with finite probability. Right? And this is very different from the case of absolute temperature goes to 0. Thank you.